All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit of music theory today. Um, not too much, don't get scared. Uh, we're gonna, the goal here is I wanna see if we can't play some different sounds with the banjo tuned as it is with no capos, with no um, tricks with the fifth string or anything like that. Uh, now generally when you play banjo, you tend to, the first songs you learn are gonna be your basic folk songs, which tend to be in G major. So um, most of the time you're gonna be playing the chords like G, C, D, and then back to G. And that's gonna cover a lot of folk songs. And the reason that works is because the uh, first chord in the, the scale is your G. And then the, um, the fourth chord is gonna be C. And the fifth chord is D. And they call that your cowboy chords. That's your one, four, five. All right, so where does all that come from? Let's take a step back, right? Let's just talk about the scale for a second. This, the G scale. Now, what, what, even further back, what's a scale? What are these notes that we're talking about, right? Well, uh, there tends to be only uh, seven notes in an octave. I know that sounds weird because octave means eight. But what that means, for example, in the G scale, you're going to get G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then back to G. And that extra G is what gives you your, your eight notes. Um, and uh, we can talk later about why they do the notes the way they do it, but just take my word for it, right? And you're already probably using those notes. So if you strike the third string open, that's a G. And the reason that works is because your banjo's tuned to open G. So that third note, that third string, that's, that's G. And then if you take your, uh, put your finger on the uh, third string second fret, that's A. And then you strike the second string, that's B. Second string first fret, that's going to be C. First string open, that's going to be D. First string second fret, that's E. You can slide it up a whole step, which means two frets. That's F sharp, and then you're gonna do the, the fifth fret, which is your high G. You play that all together. Cool, now you have a scale, right? scale you can you can play a little bit of it and go back and just kind of go back and forth so already you're probably figuring out if I've been playing these folk songs in the key of G and I start noodling around with those specific notes that starts to sound like a melody a lead that you can play on top of those chords right so so if you're strumming along with your open G chord and start plucking out the individual notes in that scale So that's how banjo players tend to fake a melody on top of a song. Well, it's not really faking, it, it, it is the melody. All right, so now let's talk about the chords in the key of G. What makes a chord? Well, let's talk about the G because that's easy. That's the first chord. And you think of your notes as you just replace G, A, B, C, D with one, two, three, four, five. And a chord tends to be your first, third, I'm not going to flip you off here on <laughs> your first, third, and your fifth to make the, the triad that is a chord, right? So that's going to be your G, A, B, C, D. So G, B, and C, G, A, B, C. G, B, and D, that's going to be your chord. I, sh I should have made some notes here, but um, you'll find that if you strum, you're going to play, well, that first string is a D. That's the fifth note. For the third string is going to be a G, that's the first no note in the chord. And then the second string is going to be a B, that's your third note in the scale, which is uh, part of that chord. And then the uh, first string is back to D. So it's okay to play multiple 
D's or multiple B's or multiple G's within the chord shape. A lot of times, especially if you're playing a guitar, you have six strings and there's only three notes in a chord, well, you're probably going to play some of those more than once. Same, same thing with banjo. All right, so that's, that's what makes a chord. Now, here's the really cool thing, is if you start the chord at any one of those seven notes that we just talked about, you can make a chord off of that. Now, I'll run through them real quick and kind of explain it in a bit. So the first one we just talked about, that's G. Well, the next note is going to be A, right? So what, what chord shape uses A that's going to fit in there. Well, it just so happens it's A minor. And then the next one's going to be B minor. And then you're going to have C. And then you're going to have D. And then you're going to have E minor. And then you're going to have F sharp. And then back to G. Now, you might want to rewind that and watch that a couple times, but if you learn those seven chords, and you can go online, find some chord shapes, and, and really tear it apart and, and scrutinize it a bit more. You can play damn near any song in the key of G, but there's more to that. Um, before I get there, let me review G a little bit more, right? So typically you're playing your song in G, then your C, back to G. but you want to mix up the song and make it sound a little more interesting, you can use any of those seven notes. Let's say I want to throw that B minor that we talked about in there, right? Because that was that was a chord that existed in the key of G. Well, let's start with G, C, B minor, back to G. Gave it a little spooky air there, right? And it sounds totally right because that chord lives in the key of G. So once again, you got your G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp, G. Any of those chords is fair game when you're writing a song in the key of G, right? Now you might ask yourself, why are you playing an A minor instead of an A major? Or why are you playing a B minor? And the reason why is when you take those seven notes, the G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G, those are the only notes that you're allowed to use within that scale. So if you start at the A note, right? So let's say G, A, right? Then A, you're gonna skip the B and go to C. So now you have A and C. Then you have D, you're gonna skip that and go to E. So that gives you your, your uh, one, three, and five, right? So that gives you your <laughs> A, C, and E. Well, if you do the A minor shape, let's tear that apart, right? That, that fourth string I'm playing, that's an E. The third is an A. Well, got my little tuner here. That second string is a C. And then that first note is an E. So it's got all three of those notes that we talked about that lives in the key of G. So it's an A minor. If I played an A major, it's gonna sound a little different, right? Then that's because instead of playing, sure, you're gonna play that uh, E note and you're gonna also play the, the A note, but instead of playing the C, you're gonna play a C sharp. So that C is bumped up a half step. So hear how that's different. That's an A major, that's an A minor. That little note on that second string, going from the first fret, fret to the second fret, is the world of difference between the A major and the A minor. That's minor, that's major. And the reason why, once again, is that that major, that C sharp note, does not live in the key of G, right? Okay, it, and the same thing applies for all the chords. You can do the same thing with the B minor and you can start as B as your root note in that G scale and go, and go root plus plus two and, and then plus four and you're gonna get all the notes that live inside that B minor. Same thing with C, same thing with D, same thing with E minor, same thing with F sharp, and same thing with G. Now 
that gives you a lot of cool toys to play with. You can write so many songs with those seven chords. Now, being that you're playing it in G, you're probably gonna start the song in G, not always, but you're definitely gonna resolve the song in G. So, G, C, D, G, G, throw an A minor in, A minor, E minor, G. See how the variety is there? Like one could be the verse and one could be the chorus. So that's really cool. And you can do that for all of them. Start with the G, B minor. C, G. Now sometimes your chorus, you're gonna start with, say, the C chord, or you're gonna start with another chord that lives in that key of G. So, so say your chorus is gonna be C, D, G. Now that's resolving back to the G, so you're always gonna bring it back home. And again, not always. The cool thing about music is there's an exception to every stinking rule. These are really just guidelines. And mostly these guidelines are helpful for learning other songs. If someone is playing a folk song, you can say, what key are you playing that in? They say, I'm playing in the key of G. And odds are really good there's gonna be a G, a C, and a D in there. And if you learn all seven of the chords, when they mix it up and throw an A minor or an E minor in, you're gonna go, oh, okay, cool, I see what they're doing and you're gonna be able to follow along really quickly. Now, here's, here's where it gets really cool. Let's say you don't wanna write a song in a major key because that sounds too happy and you wanna write a song in a minor key, like E minor. sounds totally different, kind of sad, kind of moody, kind of introspective, right? Here's the really cool thing. That's actually the G major scale. All you did was start on the sixth note, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now, being that it's a minor, harmonic minor scale, um, it, a harmonic minor actually is the same as a major scale just starting on the sixth note. So let's start with the, the G, right? G, A, B, C, D, E, right? Oh, hey, we know that note because when we were playing E minor, right? So now let's start on this string. I'm gonna use the fourth string, second fret. That's an E. So you go um, E, A, B, C, D, E. Oh, sorry, I screwed that up. Ignore that. I'll start that again. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's an E minor scale. And if you noticed, I was playing all the same notes that were in the G major scale. I'm going to do that again, just to bring it home, because I messed up earlier, right? We'll start on the E, and then we'll go to the F sharp, and then the G. Now at this point, this should be familiar territory because I'm playing the third string open. Then A, B, C, D, E. Now if I end the song on that E note, that's a song in minor. So even if I just play just single notes. I'm gonna do that again, but I'm gonna do it in G major, and I'm gonna just play single notes, not chords. Right? I didn't memorize those notes, I didn't write any tabs down, I just played a mess of notes randomly I just made sure to resolve on the G when I was done. So once again, I'll do the minor, starting at the E. Right? Okay, 
now let's bring the chords in. We know that the chords are going to all be the same because the notes are all the same. So we'll, but this time we're going to start at E minor. So we'll do E minor, F sharp, G, A minor, B minor, C, D, and then back to E minor. And all I did was just do the chords and progression and that had a nice mellow introspective sound to it. Or sad, depends on what your mood is, but it... All right, so what we just talked about, the cowboy chords, the one, four, five, that still applies wherever you start. So we could do a one, four, five pattern, right? So let's start with E being number one, F sharp, G, A, A minor, that's gonna be your fourth chord and then you're gonna have B minor, that's gonna be your fifth chord. So let's try that. E minor, A minor, B minor, E minor, E minor, A minor, B minor, E minor, right? One, four, five, really cool, introspective, sad song. Let's do the same thing back in your G major with the one, four, five, right? That's gonna be your G, C, and D, so. You can almost hear the relationship of the progression between the chords, but the mood is different. All right, so, so that right there, without changing the tuning of your banjo or altering your drone string or anything, you're getting all these cool chords and scales and and songs that you can now play, right? So the next thing we're gonna do, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a real big wrinkle in this. It turns out that major and minor are not the only modes that you can play in. They call that modes. Every time you start a scale at a different number in, in the sequence, that's a different mode. Now I'm gonna confess, I don't have all the modes memorized, but I've been playing around with some of the different modes. Uh, the other night I I, mess, I messed around with what's called Phrygian, and that gives us really, some people call it a Mediterranean sound, and it's still your G scale. You're starting with you know G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, back to G. But this time I'm gonna start on the B note, right, which would be the third chord in that sequence. So if it's B, that means you're playing the B minor, right? So then you would go to C major, and then you would go to D, then E minor, then F sharp, then G, then A minor, and then back to B, ma B minor. And see how it kind of, that last chord kind of lingers, it feels this, this weird kind of tension. So again, we're still playing all the same notes and chords that were in G major. And we as banjo players love G major because our banjo is tuned to open G. The banjo was designed to be G friendly. This doesn't just apply though to the G scale. It applies to other scales. The banjo is also very uh, C major friendly, right? And you can do the same exercise. You start with the C and the and work, basically go, go online, look up all the, the notes in the scale of C, and then, and then find all the chords in the scale of C, and you'll find that the chords line up exactly with the notes, right? So you've got a C, a D, an E minor, an F, that's different than the F sharp, right? G, and so on. Um, I don't want to go further because 
I might get it wrong and I don't want to confuse you. I think at this point I'd rather you go online, do a search for the scale that you want to play. G major and C major are very banjo friendly, but when you learn those, you also get the bonus. If you learned C major, you also learned E minor. Or sorry, if you learned G major, you also learned E minor. If you learned C major, you learned A minor. So here I'm playing C. A minor is in that scale too, so this time you start with A minor. A minor. C. F. A minor. All those chords are in the C major scale, but they're also in the A minor scale. Now I haven't done the math yet, I haven't counted to what comes next after that, right? I, is it B major? So I could start and do the Phrygian equivalent or, or whatever. So C, A, C, D, E. So I think starting at E, maybe that would be the Phrygian equivalent. So don't get too caught up on that. What I'm suggesting to do is go online, find the scale, learn the individual notes, then go learn the chords and see how those chords just lay over those notes in the scale. Um, and then play around with the relationship of the chords. Um, so, the point here being, if you learn one scale, you're actually getting a lot of bonus material with that, and you can play a lot of songs. Um, beyond that, there's other tricks. You can play D major on a banjo. You just tune the fifth string a little different. Um, you can play uh, A major by putting a capo on. All sorts of other tricks to get into those other scales, but once you transcend to a different scale, all the same math applies. You're just shifting it over, starting at a different root note. So, all right. So there's there's probably better explanations out there than what I gave you, but mostly what, what I want you to walk away with is, hey, this this stuff applies to banjo, and it's it's kind of accessible. It's not it's not scary, and it's not something that you can't play. You can't, don't, don't ever say, I can only play um, happy songs on a banjo. That's definitely not true play all sorts of songs on a banjo.